four getting ready to start. We're back at Sinan and Marina getting a look at our head coaches tonight who you just heard from, Jonas Kozlowskis. His advice, be tough to a team that doesn't have as much experience as Panathinaikos. They had Panathinaikos, of course, won as players with three titles on this team, three titles each in uh, but in uh in, in that team, but in Seska, of course, you have guys who are coming here for the first time and trying to win for the first time. They have their own title winners in Ramuna Seskowskis and, and Victor Kriapa uh, for an example, but those guys, one of them won with Panathinaikos, of course. That would be uh, Ramuna Seskowskis won his first one with with them. So, of course, the experience on this Panathinaikos team just can't be overestimated. There you see 13th straight season under under Joko Bradovic, eight year, he's had eight year league titles by himself, Joko Bradovic, and five of those with Panathinaikos. We're getting ready to start. Let's introduce you to our referees for tonight's game. Carl Jungebrand of Finland, Jose Martin of Spain, and Stretin Radovic of Croatia will be the men with the whistles. We're nearing tip-off. The Turkish Airlines Euro League Final Four welcomes the world with 174 countries tuning in. It's semifinals Friday, the first of two in a doubleheader tonight. And we have Panathinaikos versus Seska, the defending champion versus the team that's been in the Final Four more than anybody else, ready to go at tip-off. Istanbul, Turkey. Sinan Erdem Arena, the place is full and getting loud. The Panathinaikos fans are filling up the top tier. Here we go in the semifinal, and it's controlled by Seska, the tip-off. Seskowskis on the wing with the ball. He takes a three-pointer to get it going. That's off the mark. Rebound goes to Kostas Kaimakoglu, handing off to Dimitris Diamantidis, last year's Final Four MVP. And to that man, Shadas Jacekiewicz, just making his first start of an entire season, but he's the active player with the most Euroleague title. Sato goes baseline. Somebody gets a piece of it. The ball is loose. Sato got his own rebound, Johnny, but he had to. He was challenged at the rim. Hey, we're seeing already Jessica's idea on defense. They're switching the pick and roll. They even switch with the five man. Kershaw went out to guard Sadas, and Sato wasted no time to go inside. He's He's got a lot of trees underneath the basket. He's going to have to get up quick to get the shot off. Panathinaikos got that one back, however. They're going to try it again with their first possession. 0-0 zero, zero early in the first half. There's Maddox from Shadas for the first dunk and the first points of the Final Four. There was a miscommunication on defense. Both of them stayed with Sadas. That was Theodosis and Kirsten staying with him. Sadas spotted him beautifully for that pass. Gidelenko inside gets challenged by Maric and misses the shot. Panathinaikos coming the other way with a first basket of the game lead. They go right back inside the Madic and he finishes against the big man of Seska. Look at Obradovic. He pulls Madic off the bench, puts him in the starting lineup, comes up with two big baskets, and this is what Panathinaikos needed. A good start. Seskowskis on the wing for Seska. Gets a screen from Kirstich. Passes off to Teodosic. Back inside to Kirstic. And back inside again. He's backing down. Turnaround jumper off the mark. Kaimakogo with the rebound. Let's see who the foul is called on. Looks like it's going to be on Kaimakogo. Very physical in there. He picked up an earlier defensive rebound. Trying to keep Andre Kirilenko off the boards, and that's no easy task. Kirilenko does it all. One of the top rebounders in the top rebounder early this season. It's going to be a foul off the ball. Looks like Madic will be caught using his arms a little bit. He's done a great job so far using his body. Kershaw took a bad shot the last time and he's doing exactly what Obradovich wants him to do. He wants Kershaw to get tired. He's putting his body on him. There's Teodosic out top. Uses the pick and roll. Goes towards the basket. Gets bumped. Misses the shot but he drew the first foul on Diamantidis. Yeah he turned uh, Diamantidis didn't have his chest in front of Teodosic, and it looks like it's going to be a two-shot foul. Milos Teodosic going to the free throw line for Seska, trying to get their first points, and we're almost two minutes into this game. As everybody's getting challenged going to the basket. And the fact that Panathinaikos has been able to create one easy basket for Matic has been the surprise so far. I think Panathinaikos has come out very focused. 
you can see they're very concentrated. Jessica, we have the highest scoring team in, in Europe, in the EuroLeague, and they've struggled. They finally got on the board and it's taken the free throws from Teodosic. Milos Teodosic, an 88.1% free throw shooter, puts down the first one against Seska Moscow on the board. And drops the second as well, making it two to four. We're early in the first quarter of the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four, first semifinal. Diamantidis working with Matic, goes across to Yasakevich, is off his hands and out of bounds for the game's first turnover. Every time down court so far, Frank, we've seen Diamantidis run the pick and roll using Matic. So Kursic is the man that has to come off and guard him. They like that mismatch this time. He spotted Yasikvicius in the corner, but turned it over. Victor Kriapa with the ball out top. A great creator for a big man. He goes to Kirstich for a short jumper. In and out. Look at that rebound. By Kamer Kogolo. He's all over the court. Very aggressive. Very tough. And you cannot leave him open like he is right now. Into Maddox. Kamer Koglo with the pass. And Maddox with the dunk. Three baskets inside for Alex Maddox. With authority. He's playing a great game. On the defensive end, also. Teodosic out top, stops, drops a three pointer. That's out, and the rebound goes to Matic. They're controlling the defensive boards as well, John. Let's see if they go back to the bread and butters from the pick and roll. Going to Matic's side, they do the same thing this time, Frank. Two picks. Yeah, Matitis with the ball, looking inside of Matic. He's surrounded and gets fouled from behind by, it looks like. Bramunas Shishkowskis. How did he get that pass in there? You see that he lobbed it over his Midas' defender, Kersic. The help was behind, but it's a perfectly placed pass by Diamantidis. Midas asked for a blow. He's coming out of the game. He's been working so hard, but he gave the team three quality minutes right now. Now we have Mike Batista in the game. Panathinaiko sitting on a 2 to 6 lead to start this game. Diamantidis to Yasakevichis. And right into Batista. It's slam. Is off the mark, but he was fouled going up by Andre Kirilenko. We've talked again and again about the Panathinaikos pick and roll. They went right to it, and they're getting a lot out of it, John. you got to love the start. If you're a Panathinaikos fan, you have to love this start. They're going to their bread and butter right off the bat, going pick and roll. They're going to they're, they're using Kirstich's man to set that pick, and then they're just taking it hard to the basket. Two big moves by Coach Joko Obradovic. Puts Alex Maric in the game. Only started eight games before this this season, but he is two years ago an all EuroLeague first team player, even though he plays less for Panathinaikos. And Sharuna Yasikevich has been on the delivering end of two of those open dunks so far and getting Batiste to the line. Of course, he's the winningest player as far as EuroLeague titles are concerned with four in his career, and he's undefeated at the Final Four. Not a bad bet putting him in the game. Now it's 2-8 to eight for Panathinaikos. Teodosic will try his pick and roll again with Kirstich. Goes behind his back to Kriapa for a three-pointer. And that's off the mark. Teodosic, long rebound from three. Misses. There's Un- Kaima Kogolo in, uh, inside for the rebound. He picks up the fan, foul on Kirilenko. Look at Jessica's offense so far. We've seen almost, almost only three-point shots being launched from the outside. Not too many passes. This is not indicative of what... Jessica does because this is a team that averages 19 and a half assists a game. And so far, they've been trying to shoot from the outside. And two fouls on Andre Kirilenko. Not good news for Seska. Yasakevich is inside Beautiful the Batiste. Pass. He's fouled and he makes it. Mike Batiste of Panathinaikos has them up 2-10. to 10. They're putting a clinic on. Beautiful passing by the Panathinaikos guards. Yasakevicius, Diamantidis and of course the big men that are sending big, strong screens and rolling quickly to the basket. They're getting the ball. They're not wasting any time. They're not hesitating. They're going up and finishing strong. And they're drawing two fouls apiece on the top two ranked players in the EuroLeague this season. Kililenko and Kirstich. Kirstich goes up. Sasha Count goes on to replace him. And Mike Batiste makes it a three-point play. Panathinaik goes up 2-11. to 11. This, They've got Cheshika on their heels right now. Uh, Cheshika's going to have to reorganize their game plan. Now they're going to try to go see Skalskis inside. Sasha Khan backing down on Batiste. Goes to the hoop. Misses. His tip misses. But there's Skalskis to put it back for the first basket after almost four minutes for Seska Moscow. Exactly. And we're talking about a very high-scoring team, Frank. Very unusual they take this long to score. 
second highest scoring team in the early this season with 85 points a game. But look at the ball movement to Sato for a three-pointer. Pathanikos doing nothing wrong. Everything right to start this ball game. Well, that's what happens when you dominate inside and you've scored all the points in the paint, you're going to get open three-point shots. That's exactly what happened on that play for Sato. It's like they knew it was coming, and they got a steal at the other end. Panathinaikos pouring it on, up double digits after four minutes. Diamantinas to the hole. He makes it. His first shot. It's now 4-16. to Panathinaikos storming Seska. Incredible shooting percentage by Panathinaikos, but then again, all the shots are in the paint. Jayadosic out top for Seska. They want to get something going, but they got a lot of game left. Kriapa from downtown knocks it down. Victor Kriapa. That's a big shot. Jessica needs to get some offense going here. I'm sure they're, they're a little shaky right here. They've got a lot of pressure on them, Frank. They're coming in here as favorites, and Beth and Eichel's just taking it to them. Yamatinas over to Jessica. wide open, and it's nothing but net. Beth and Eichel's up. 7 to 19. We had a perfect view on that. Teodosic had to go to help on Sadas on that pick and roll play. That left Sadas wide open in the three for another corner three pointer. Going inside to Kirilenko. Finally, Siska gets the ball into him. He gets fouled by Romain Sato, but before the shot, so they ought to take it out of bounds again. Pantaneco's doing everything right, John, tactically as well. And let's not forget, they got the, a bigger crowd than Seska here at Sinan Erdem Arena in Istanbul. So they will be, they have that crowd into the game. They got that going back to the Final Four to try to win. But this year, they did make it back. So you know, this is a second in a row of something they have been waiting for the chance to have. And they've shown it in this first five minutes of action. Exactly. They are playing very well, very focused, very concentrated. It's very important for them to set the tone early in this game, and that's what they've done. Like I said, Jessica came in here as favorite. They have an incredible team, which very few times we could have we seen a collection of players on the same team like we see with Jessica. But Panathinaikos, they just came out and taken it to them, going right to their bread and butter play, pick and roll. They wanted to get Kirchis out of the game. He has two fouls. They got him out of the game, and they got some easy baskets in the meantime. And Johnny, you made the point when we did a preview video this morning on EuroLeague TV that Seska had a great season, but they have never been favorites quite like this out of Final Four against an opponent quite as strong as Panathinaikos. As some people had had Seska as the big favorite to win it all, and they've got to deal with the pressure. Now they've got more. Oh, yeah. Now they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole. Sure, they've got plenty of time to get back in the game, but they can't be happy with this start. Andre Voron Savic in the game for Seska Moscow. There he is receiving on the wing. He's an energy guy. Young gets to the hoop. He goes right after Sato. Back door to Kirilenko. Another foul on Sato. This one will put Kirilenko on the line. Well, Jessica is doing what they have to do. We've noticed the last few times down court, they've been getting a lot closer to the basket. They've got a great height height advantage against Panther Nicholson in just about every position. But not only do they have that height position, height advantage, but they got guys like Kidalinko can really sky. They've got a lot of leapers and great athleticism. Well, you talk about the deep bench on both these teams. Seska has brought in Sasha Kahn and Voron Sevic, and they also have Alexi Shved on the bench. Sasha Khan is a career leader in two-point percentage in the EuroLeague. If Shved comes on the floor, he's a career leader in three-point percentage in the EuroLeague. That free throw goes out for Kirilenko. He misses a pair right there, so it's still a 12-point difference. And even though Khan got his hand on the rebound, it went out on him, and, and it will be Panathinaikos' ball. Little nerves on the case of, on the case of Andre Kirilenko there that fell on yeah, I'm sure, like I said, they're on their heels. Je Jessica's on their heels right now, and they're just going to have to try to get themselves back into this game, get a little bit closer to the basket on offense. Yasekevich just on the wing, playing with Batiste, gets it to Diamantidis. He's still holding, looking for the screen from Batiste. He gets it, shoots inside, and that will be offensive goaltending on Batiste. He didn't know if it was a pass that he had a slam. He's so used to it. Yeah. <laughs> He's thinking, i got to slam this one. He's so used to getting that ball after setting the pick and rolling the basket. He was going up there looking for that lob pass. So a break for Seska. They come the other way, but still trailing 12 with four minutes left in the first quarter. Count hands off to Teodosic. He goes inside to Kirilenko, but before he does, looks like he might have drawn a second foul on Diamantidis. 
We'll see. That's not a good sign if it, that's the case for Panathinaikos. You got the two team leaders, Kita Lengo and Yamatidis, with two fouls apiece just six minutes into the game. Yeah, they're both great defensive players. Kirilenko won all defensive player of the year this year, and Diamantidis has won so many times, can't even count. It's very key that they have that they don't get in foul trouble. Coming on the floor for Seska is that man we mentioned, Alexei Shved, talented youngster who can be a game changer and is certainly a regular on the highlights with the he's got an incredible first step and he uses it to set up his teammates, as we said. He's the only player in the history of the EuroLeague to have a career 50% 50% accuracy rate from the three-point line, so he can throw it up from deep, too. And we've seen him dunk on the break like nobody. So let's see if Schwedt can help them out. Right now, they got the two free throws down, and now down to a 10-point difference in favor still of Panathinaikos. Diamantidis out top, playing with Kaimakoglu. Hands off to Yasakevich. It's back to Kaimakoglu. Pass tipped by Sved. It hits the referee, so it will stay Panathinaikos' ball. There's 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Again, we see Panathinaikos moving Jessica's defense, and they finally set it up for a pick and roll and trying to get some mismatches on the rotations. That's Kevichis working with Batiste. They're surrounding him now. Kaimakoglu, good three-point shooter. He steps inside the line, misses off the front of the rim. And comes the other way with the rebound. Kicks to Shred. He's going to launch from downtown to star. That's off the front of the rim and into the hands of Kaima Koglu. Doing a great job on rebounds. Great job, Kaima Koglu. Kaima Koglu into Batiste. Another easy basket inside. They recognize the mismatch in transition. But Batiste does a great job. He runs straight straight down the middle of the floor. Doesn't post out, out post up outside the lane. He posts up right underneath the basket. Fantastic. Fantastic first quarter from so far for Panathinaikos, but here's Teodosic trying to get one back. Rebounds long, but he chases it down. Another chance for Siska Moscow. Teodosic. Dvoran Sevich, he's going to try a three-pointer as well. It's Sved with the long rebound this time. They're getting a lot of open three-pointers. They were the second-best team in three-point percentage in the league, but obviously the nerves mean that not many of them are going down. Teodosic missing as well. Here's another chance, Voron Sevich over to Teodosic. An open three off the mark as well. So the three-pointers are definitely not falling for what looks like a nervous Siska team. Yeah, they're, they're definitely a little frustrated right now. They've got to get the ball inside. They've had success inside. 38% three-point shooting team, but it's Pantanaikos has been hitting more. Look at Siasakevich's fakes and gets it off the board. Frank. Everything going right for the Greens. Frank, that's called composure. We've seen Yasikovicius do it on this possession. Kai Kogolo did it on the one before. They're not rushing three-pointers. They're going up for a fake. They're faking the, the defenders and getting a better shot. This time, Sadis made the shot. Shved for Seska, looking for somebody. Gets it to on Sevich. And inside the count, count backing down on Batiste. And finishes Sasha Kao. They needed that one. Yeah. Again, their points are all coming in the paint. They've got a height advantage at almost every position. They've got to get close to the basket. It's very difficult for Panthenichols to defend them there. Not a bad idea. Go to him. Here's Yasukevich at baseline. One-hander, and that goes in, too. Sadas is playing a great game. He's making some excellent passes, great decisions. We see him go baseline. It's not easy to get a shot off against the Jessica defense. You've got Kitalenko in there. You've got some high flyers. He went in there and Threw up a little flip shot. Stroke of genius, you have to say, at this point. Joko Bradovich, Yasukevich just didn't rest the whole season, but never started. And he's out there for almost the entire first quarter by now. One of the older guys in this whole Final Four. David Logan in to replace him now, as well as Stratos Paparoglu and Ian Vujukas for Panathinaikos. And Kirstich is back in the game for Sesika. It's Fed working on Kaimakoglu. Crosses him. And goes in a basket to finish. What a basket by Sved. Great crossover move, and he goes left and finishes with his left. Excellent play. Cut the leads to 12. Yamatidis trying to strike back for Panathinaikos. Goes to the corner to Logan wide open. Off the back of the rim. The rebound's loose, and Logan is fighting for it. It's on the floor. Look at him go. It's going to be a jump ball. The possession will stay with Panathinaikos. But you had to figure it out because everything's going their way so far. <laughs> Well, I think they're earning it too, Frank. They're really out there focused. They're, they're hustling. I think they're earning all the breaks they're getting at this point in the game. Really got to appreciate the passing from the point guards of Panathinaikos. Uh, 
Yamantidis is seeing over the defense. He's spotting everything. He's spotting his centers rolling to the basket. He's spotting the guys that are open in the corner. Excellent passing. It's a 13-25 lead with 45 seconds left in the first quarter. It's been all Panathinaikos so far. Yamantidis going to the basket. Ball was knocked away. It goes out of bounds. We see Gordon is in the game now. So Diamantidis has another different de look defender against him. Gordon's incredible long arms, great defensive player, very strong. It's going to be a tough matchup now for Diamantidis. There he is out top, gets by Gordon, hands off to Vuyukas. They pull it back out to Diamantidis, working to Vuyukas. His hook shot's in and out, look at Costa Satsadis, and the rebound by Diamantidis for another Panathinaikos basket. They're just coming in waves, Frank. If they miss the shot, look at it. They have two other players on the boards to clean up the mess. 13 to 27, last 10 seconds of the first quarter. Shred out top for Seska. Skips and goes. Gets a shot off, but he's fouled on the way up by David Logan. So with 4.4 seconds left, he'll have a chance to add some points. And you have to think, even though Seska is one of the higher scoring teams in the EuroLeague, second in the league, 85 points per game, they got to be looking at guys who can fill it up near the basket, including Shved getting there, as he does a couple times so far because the three-pointers just aren't falling. The three-pointers aren't falling, and I think they could do a better job getting some offensive rebounds and, of course, getting the ball close to the basket. We've seen Shred now. He can get to the basket easily. He likes to go left. He's so quick. Shred makes them both. That leaves 4.4 seconds for Panathinaikos in what's already been a spectacular first quarter. You can bet they're going to try to make it even better. Up 12 against a team that... Everybody had as one of the best. Here's the play. Logan on his own, going all the way there. Let's see if he gets it off. He does. It falls. And a perfect first quarter ends for Panathinaikos Athens with a 15-29 scoreboard as David Logan goes the length of the floor, beats the buzzer with a layup, and gives Panathinaikos Athens a 15-29 first quarter lead in the first semifinal at the 2012 Turkish Airlines Final Four. We'll come back, but right now, during... Second quarter action ready to start in Istanbul, Turkey. It's been all Panathinaikos. They're up 15 to 29. Seska's going to have to use the next 10 minutes to battle back. Shooting percentage is 71%. Two pointers for Panathinaikos to 37% in that first quarter and eight assists to one in the first quarter. Seska's got to turn it around. They try to go inside the Kirstich right away. They get at least a foul out of that one, Johnny. They got a foul on Vujokas, and that's what Kirsik does very well. He's very good at sealing for position. He's tough. He's got a big, wide body. Tough to get around him and deny him the ball. Zizkowskis out top. Hands off to Jamal Gordon. Over to Alexi Shved. Guarded by Kalathis on the floor for Panathinaikos. Goes baseline. What a pass. They get it around to Kirstic. He's fouled. Going up by Vujokas. Two in a row on him. That'll put Kirstic on the foul line. But, John, Shved has come in. Made his move and moved the ball, and we're seeing better ball movement right away with Siska. Spence did an excellent job because he's moved the ball, and also he's gotten the ball to the basket by penetrating and spotting his teammates. This is a kid who, 23 years old now, but over the years he's dominated in junior competitions with amazing quickness and ball handling abilities. Now he's bringing it to the big stage. Oh, yeah, he seems like he's been around forever. It's hard to believe he's only 23 years old. John, and you, you know there's Panathinaikos team, but you can't figure they can dominate every statistical category like they did in the first quarter. Up in rebounds, dominating an assist, two for two, three pointers for, or two for three after the start of this quarter, 10 for 14 in the paint, two pointers. And the most important, Frank, they held Jessica to only 15 points. Jessica's a team that averages 85 points a game. Shred makes it 17-29. Perperoglu for Panathinaikos moves it to Satsadis. He's still with the ball. Tries to go to Matic. They have it alive. Kalathis inside to Satsadis. Blocked by Kirstic. 
and Ceska comes the other way. Good foul by Stratos Perperoglu to stop the Ceska break, which we have not seen tonight so far. Exactly. They've taken Ceska out of their running game, especially because they've done so well on offense. They've taken such good shots. Ceska hasn't been able to get on the break, which is something they do very well. All of the Ceska players run the break, but tonight, as you see, they haven't had many, much of a chance with the shooting percentage of Pantanagos, but even with the rebound, they're stopping the break. Here's Shved inside again, gets it to Jamai Gordon, fakes, goes baseline, the ball's loose, picked up by Shved, back to Gordon, tipped out of bounds by Purple Roglu. It will stay, it will stay Seska ball, but they're having trouble making those passes. Oh, the swarm, it's a swarming uh, help rotating defense by Pantanagos. Zeska bringing it out of bounds. They're on 17 points, but they've given up 29 here early in the second quarter already to Panathinaikos. A lot of scoring. Here's Jamai Gordon trying from deep. He gets fouled. It's going to look like a two-point shot, and he'll go to the free throw line for that. That's and at least they're starting to get something out of their offenses. That's not a good foul. You never want to shoot. You never want to foul the shooter. And to top it all off, uh, Jessica will shoot every time there's a foul now. There's already 14 fouls on Panathinaikos. So early in the second quarter, they may be down by double digits as they've been for much of this game so far, says Scott. But they're doing some of the small things that could lead to, they, what do they got to do, John? They got to cut this in half by halftime or just risk maybe getting out of the game mentally with too much pressure. Well, they got to have patience. They can't get rattled. They can't get too frustrated. They have to have patience and just chip away at the lead. They've got plenty of time, but they can't get frustrated or too rattled. And that's exactly what Jamal Jordan just did with two free throws. Logan out top for Pantanaikos, chased by Shved. He passes to Satsadis. Logan in the corner now again. Makes his move, gets right by. Shved goes to the hoop, misses. And Jamal Gordon takes the rebound. Here's Shved on the wing. He makes his move on Kalathis, but he loses it, so it's turnover the other way. Good so, defense by Nick Kalathis. That's very good defense because we, we can see how quick Shved really is. He gets to the basket very fast. Good defense on both ends of the court. The refs are letting him play. Ten-point difference. Only two turnovers per team so far in this game. Ten-point difference for Pantanaikos. Here's Kalathis all the way there. Again, Kirstich gets his hand on the shot. So a little more challenge inside by the Seska big man. But the ball stays with, with Pantanaikos. Yeah. Galath is inbound to Logan in the corner. He goes inside, tries for Mata, steal by Kirstich. Here comes Shred the other way. Running with Siskowskis, decides to pull it out. But another break that didn't happen for Sisko. Kirstich is doing an excellent job on defense. Jamal Gordon's going to try from deep. His shot's around the rim and out into the hands of Alex Matic, who was the star early in the game, way ahead to Logan. But he's going to pull it out as well as both teams are getting back on defense well. Galathis cross court to Pepperoglu, fakes, goes to Sad Salis for a three pointer, and that misses. And it's Pepperoglu getting the offensive rebound. A lot of offensive boards in this game so far. For Seska, they've got more than defensive boards. And Pantanakos is up to its fifth steal attempt by Shred on the in on the lob inside the side side, but he knocks it out of bounds. He's going to get a breather, and we see Teodosic and Kitalenko come in the game for Shred and Siskowskis. You get the sense that Siskowskis is still looking for a takeover guy. Yeah, he's still looking for the right comp combination on the court because Lauskas is. I don't think we'll... Diamantinus will be in the game shortly also. I think he'll Galatis be back from the corner. He hits his first three-point attempt and keeps adding to Panathinaikos' lead. It's 19-32, to 32, John. Anybody expect anything like this in the first half against Siska Moscow? No. Okay, we have a timeout on the floor. 19-32. Score in favor. While leading Olympiakos to the 2010 title game. Now 25, he continues to play beyond his years, having collected many more career assists and three-pointers than any EuroLeague player his age or younger. Nonetheless, Teldozic promises he has plenty of room left to mature.
His fans worldwide need not worry, however, that maturity will make Teo Dosic any less spectacular. And there we saw that man, Milos Teodosic of Ceska Moscow, the youngest MVP in the EuroLeague this century. There you see it's his first season with Ceska Moscow. He won his MVP award two years ago with another Final Four team, Olympiakos. And there he is with the ball. He's, good. He's one of the top passers in the EuroLeague with 5.4 assists per game this season. We'll see if he can pull out some of those passes to get easy baskets for Ceska. It's Kriapa, the Foul line, he's going to take a jumper, fullback jumper, but that misses too. And Kalathis with the rebound for Panathinaikos. He still has the ball, hands off to Logan. Logan working on Jamai Gordon. Tries to drive on him, goes baseline, gets it around, whipped around to Kalathis. He goes inside, hands off to Matic. Another block inside. This one by Kirilenko. Three blocks in the last couple minutes for Seska. If he didn't get it, it looked like Kersi was going to block it. Very tough to get the ball off against those two guys. Kriapa to Jamal Gordon. Back to Kriapa. He's going to drive. His shot gets blocked by Matic. Matic is doing an awesome job underneath the basket, using his body, taking up space. Galat is on the run, tries to go in the corner to Perperoglu. The ball is free. Everybody going for it. And who gets it? Panathinaikos. Panathinaikos gets the ball, and whenever the ball's up in the air, it's very tough for a Chesica player not to touch it first. They're so athletic, so tall, but Panathinaikos is just playing unbelievable basketball. Very inspired, very motivated. This team is so concentrated and focused, Frank. It's just beautiful basket that we, basketball that we've seen so far. Back in the game for Panathinaikos, Sharunas Jasikiewicz, Mike Batiste, and Dimitris Diamantidis well-rested. Here's Jasikiewicz going baseline. Out to Kalathis, gets a screen from Batiste, but it's Diamantidis from deep, trying to beat the shot clock and misses everything. Here comes Shved the other way for Siska. Shved has been one of the strong points so far for Siska. Off the bench, not many strong points so far. They're still stuck on 19 points with this great Panathinaikos defense. Kiapa fumbles. Kirilenko is going to back down, try to finish. And he was stopped by Diamantidis, who has a knack for incredible. playing defense against big men. Frank, incredible how he was able to slide his feet and get in front every time Kirilenko was changing direction. There's the handoff from Yasukevich to Batiste. He tried to pass, but he shuffled his feet for a turnover. But we've seen very few turnovers so far in this game, three apiece. And we're halfway through the second quarter. It shows you how the execution has been, especially on the part of Panathinaikos. The execution has been perfect. I think Batiste he, traveled he, on that play because... Panathinaikos has been getting their shots blocked recently and he saw the he saw the players underneath the basket so he shuffled his feet before he could make that pass passing around the perimeter we see Darius Labrinovic in the game for Sesaka he tries to go inside the Kirstich loses Sved tried to save it but Batiste got it steal now on the other end by Tedos it's inside the Kirilenko he finishes and is fouled Andre Kirilenko that's a tough break for Panathinaikos they could have scored on the fast break on the other end. Teodosic was very smart to come up with that pass. Gave the ball to Kirilenko. He took it to the basket. Picked up the foul on Batiste. Three-point play opportunity for Andre Kirilenko. And if you talk about the kind of spectacular team that Ceska tends to be, that kind of thing, you kind of get their juices flowing, John. Oh, yeah. They're, but look, they're down by 10 points, Frank. we still got five minutes to go in this quarter to get to halftime. But they've got plenty of time to get back into it. They can just chip away at this lead. Their defense has reestablished things with three blocks on the other end. That's what we expected to see. Nothing in the first quarter, but they certainly put on some D in the second quarter. Here's Batiste attacking. Shred that time gets his hand on the ball and tips it out of bounds. It'll stay pounding tonight's ball. But what I, what I was about to say as we head into the timeout is is that uh, those blocks that we've seen in the last five minutes while well, Seska has been outscoring Panathinaikos 7-3 to three, is match of just about every position underneath the basket, and they've got players that are capable of scoring inside. What they have to do is what they have been able to do is find a solution to guarding the pick and roll. They've done a much better job of guarding that pick and roll of Panathinaikos pick and roll. Panathinaikos ball coming out of that timeout. They still hold a 10-point lead. Yasikiewicz is Looking for Batiste, goes behind his back to Sadis. He gets it to Batiste, but it, Batiste 
stepped on the end line to receive that pass before the dunk, so that basket doesn't count. Counted as a pretty good defense again by Seska, but they got the ball inside this time, and you figure that's what Jelko Obravich had to be talking about in the timeout. Exactly, Frank, and he applauded his team. Even though they turned the ball over there, we saw him on the sidelines applauding his team because that was excellent teamwork and good execution by Panathinaikos. Shved with the ball for Seska Moscow. Guarded by Yasikevich. He goes between them. Can't finish. Tries for the lob to get Elenko. The ball is loose. Batiste throws it off the back of Kirstich. And out of bounds. A hustle play by Mike Batiste. Gets the ball back for Panathinaikos. They were coming right at our position on the floor. They were coming right at us. And you can see Batiste, before he even got to the ball, he was already screening off Kirstich to get the position. He got the ball first, and he knew exactly what he was going to do, throw it off and get the ball back. So most everything going away at Panathinaikos, including the heads-up hustle plays like that, a couple of them so far. Here's Jasikevich's against Kirstich in a mismatch. Goes to Batiste, operating on Lavrinovich. Backing him down, spins, tries to finish, kicks out. Ball tip, but it's Jasikevich is trying to beat the shot clock and missing Kirilenko with the rebound. Ahead to Shved. To Kirilenko. Gets in the lane. Passes off to Lavrinovich, and he puts it in. What a shot by Darius Lavrinovich. That was a tough shot. He wants to foul on that play. He felt he was banged by a couple players, but he got the ball off. The referees are letting him play. So the difference is down below. 10 points for the first time. It's now 24-32 in, fa- in favor of Panathinaiko still, but they worked their way down to get it to single digit. Psychological barrier was crossed maybe. Well, they've done a much better job on defense. They've held Panathinaiko to only three points so far in this quarter. A 9-3 run in this quarter by Seska Moscow. Turning on the defense as Kalathis drawing a foul this time on Lavrinovich, who was moving to try to stop the pick and roll. But he hit the floor and took the foul with him, so it was actually pretty good defense by Lavrinovich. He might have gotten there a little late. Ref called the foul against him. But that's what you gotta do. You gotta hedge out on the picks and you gotta stop the guard from getting any further, making any more progress. Once he turns that corner, the defense is in trouble. So the ball stays with Panathinaikos. They bring in Romain Sato for Kalathis. It's Diamantidis going cross court to Kamikoko out top to Yasikiewicz. Off the front of the rim, into the hands of Shved. He's running ahead. He's going by himself. He is finishing Alexei Shved. What a fast break. What speed. This guy is so fast in the open court with the ball. He just ran past everybody. Making an 11-3 run in this quarter for Seska. Keeping it now down to six points. They're making their comeback. Kaimakoglu for three from deep. In and out. Ball knocked out of bounds by Diamantidis. The luck is turning a little bit for Seska as well. Yeah, they're getting much better effort on defense. Panathinaikos has not been able to score. And with a 13-14 point lead for Panathinaikos, not many teams can cut that down as far as the Seska team has. There's Teodosic going on his own and getting fouled by Yasikiewicz. He'll get to the free throw line. He can cut it to four, which is pretty amazing considering the way Panathinaikos was playing right up to the early part of this quarter. Yeah, we saw them. We want to talk about the regular season games. They had a game in Moscow where it looked like Panathinaikos was doing a great job, was out on top. In that game, Jessica was capable of going on a 14-0 run and take the lead and just take off with the game. They haven't exactly gone on a scoreless run here, but they have dominated the score so far in the second quarter, and they're right back in the game. Teodosic with his first free throw puts him up to... Five points so far in this game. Let's see if we can get the second one down. That would make it a four-point game. That one dribbles off the rim, so five out of six. And he has his team within five points. But they're led in scoring so far by Alexis Schmidt, while it's the veteran Junius Jaskovicius and Mike Batiste with seven each for Panathinaikos. We have two minutes left in the, se- in the second quarter. Diamantidis trying from downtown. And the Panathinaikos threes are coming out. Seska ahead to Shved, three-point try, Alexis Shved out and into the hands of Kirilenko. He just skied for that rebound. Kirilenko try from downtown, that's in and out. But he gets fouled, it looks like, by Yasikevich. So he will go to the free throw line for three free throws. Andre Kirilenko with a chance to cut this difference to two. Who would have thought that just a few minutes ago, John? 
Yes, Sadis isn't happy with this call. But as we can see on the replay, he did touch Kidalenko on his follow through. We have a timeout on the floor. It's now a whole new ball game, 27 to 32, with Kidalenko going to the free throw line for three shots. And John, this till you said what happened early in the season in Moscow, and Joko Bradovic has, has said it before this game that it was a two coming from the Panathinaikos fans. It's coming, Frank. It's coming from the Olympiakos fans because Teodosic is yelling at them to get up and cheer. So now Jessica has the Olympiakos fans and the Jessica fans on this. There you see the Olympiakos fans. Not only do they don't like Panathinaikos forever, but Teodosic. As we said two years ago, was the MVP of the EuroLeague in their uniform. His team's coming back, and they would love to see him knock out their enemy, Panathinaikos. That's why we see the Panathinaikos or the Olympiakos fans joining in, and there'll be more of them coming in. Their team plays the second semifinal tonight against Barcelona. Just an incredible atmosphere here. Kirilenko missed the first free throw of the three that he gets he made the second one he's got it up to a four he's got down to a four point difference but he missed three in a row as of his first uh, attempts he's got two back with the second two this time he's got Seska within three points with a full two minutes left until halftime Diamantidis driving his pass was tipped it looks like I don't know by whom somebody on Seska tipped the ball Kaimikoglu purposefully did not catch it even though he had a chance so he must have saw the tip as the rep did and the ball will stay with Panathinaikos. Yeah, he clearly did not want to catch that ball. He saw it was tipped. Diamantidis out top with a mismatch against Kirsic who falls down but Diamantidis misses the three-pointer and it's Teodosic committing the foul as the the old man Jens Kavich is chasing down offensive rebounds. Everything Going right, at least for him tonight. He's been out there a lot, making his first start of the season. And I wouldn't be surprised if it was his first offensive rebound of the season as well. Look at the way he's moving on the floor, though. Very determined. That's Kevich just with the ball. He tries to go inside to Kaimakoglu. Kaimakoglu operating on Kirilenko. Another block, but Batiste gets a rebound. This hook shot is in and out. Ripped the rebound. Kirilenko ahead to Teodosic. Transition goes to Kirilenko on the wing. He'll try another three-pointer. And this time he hits it. We have a tie ball game in the Turkish Airlines Euro League. First semifinal. It's 32-32 with a minute left until halftime. John, what a turnaround for this Jessica. This is incredible, Frank. We are seeing two different Jessica teams. Mostly we're seeing a great defensive team. They've just been able to deny Panathinaikos scoring this quarter. Still only three points scored by Panathinaikos after nine minutes. Everybody talked about the, the athletic offensive availability of Seska, but the truth is they came into this game with a better defense average for the season than Panathinaikos, and they've turned it on right now. We got a minute left and 17 seconds still halftime. But ladies and gentlemen, it was a 14 point difference for the defending champs just seven or eight minutes ago. They have completely turned it around. And here's the three pointer to tie it up by Andre Kirilenko on that shot. You know, it's not Frank, it's not only the 14 point difference. It was just Panathinaikos was just clearly dominating the game. And now all of a sudden we have a brand new game all tied up. 13-0 run for Seska. Yasikevich just trying to make a difference. They go around to Diamantidis out top. He's got a mismatch on Kirstich again. Gets inside of Batiste. Turnaround jumper. Mike Batiste ends the drought for Panathinaikos. That might have been one of their toughest shots, Frank, they've had so far this quarter. He made a beautiful turnaround shot on the baseline. It was a 17-3 run in this quarter for Seska until that shot by Batiste. He puts Panathinaikos back up. Now it's Seska, 30 seconds until halftime. Jamal Gordon gets it to Kirstich. He misses as close as you can get. He missed that one, could have tied it up. Gives Panathinaikos a chance with 25 seconds on the clock until halftime. It's a difference of eight with the shot clock. We'll see how far down they take it. Yasikevich is working with Batiste. Kind of Close to Satsadis, gets it to Yasikevich, gets it back. He tries a three-pointer. Yasikevich off the mark. Gordon with nine seconds left. 
He's trying to go all the way, but Sato comes from behind and knocks it out of bounds with 6.7 seconds left until halftime. Two-point difference on the scoreboard. Seska's going to take a timeout and either try to tie this up or go ahead with 6.7 seconds, seven seconds left until halftime, Johnny Rogers. Who do you think they'll look for? Well, it's great hustle on that play by Sato to set up the, the out-of-bounds play. If you're, Je- if you're Jessica, you can go on a, a number of, you've got a number of options. I think what they're going to do is they're probably going to set some picks. You're going to try to score inside. Jonathan Eichel's defense is going to collapse, and we're going to probably end up seeing a three-point shot by any number of players on their team right now. Three-pointers have been tough for Moscow so far. They were number two in the EuroLeague with a 39.2 percentage this season, but they've only hit two out of nine so far tonight. You don't think they're going to be shy about taking them, though? No, they've made them all season, and you have to do that, Frank. They just came, got off to a poor start. I think they rushed their shots in the beginning. We didn't see too many passes. We saw a lot of one pass, ball went up for a three-pointer. They didn't get in the rhythm of the games. It's always best to get the ball inside. Let your post guy go to work inside. If he doesn't have a shot, kick it back out for the three-point shots. Those shots are usually much easier to shoot. John, we were talking about Seska settling down early in the second quarter, but they didn't more than settle down. After a really rough first quarter, they lost the first quarter 15-29, to 29, a 14-point lead for Bantanikos after one. That could have shocked a lot of these Seska players out of the game because they're not used to anything like that. But instead, they have a chance to tie or go ahead with 6.7 seconds left until halftime. They're inbounding under the basket, so they'll have a, won't have to dribble much before getting a shot. There's a whistle before Teodosic can inbound, and let's see why they turned... Why they call the whistle and giving him another chance to inbound. Same 6.7 seconds left. Teodosic looking for somebody. The ball went off Kirstich and back to Teodosic. It's now loose in the middle of the floor. Look at Diamantidis from deep trying to beat the buzzer. So Seska can't tie it. Diamantidis can't put the buzzer beater down. And we are going to have an incredible ball game in the second half now that Seska Moscow has made up a 14-point difference to draw within 32-34 at halftime of the first semifinal in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague. We will come back soon enough to talk with, well, we'll we'll, we'll tell you that the second game tonight, after this one finishes, shortly after, we have FC Barcelona against Olympiacos. It's a semifinal doubleheader at the 2012 Turkish Airlines EuroLeague final four and as we said first half finishes with 32 for Seska, 34 for Mantanaikos promising thrills in the second half we'll come back at halftime right after this an even match going into the second half we are going to try to also hear from the head coach of the defending champions from Panathinaikos and we will in a moment be connected to hear what Zelko Bradovic had to say about the first half. Yeah, we heard from both of our head coaches here in the first semifinal in the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. We have another one coming up later, Barcelona against Olympiacos. But the first half of this one has been wild enough with a 14-point with a comeback by Seska to basically make this an even game, Johnny Rogers. You listened to what the coaches had to say. What do you think they're going to be preparing for the second half? Well, actually, Frank, both coaches should feel pretty good coming into the second second half because first of all Panathinaikos knows if they execute properly they're going to be able to get some good baskets good good uh, shots under the basket on the other hand Jessica knows that they can get back into the game they can play this play much better and so they've got 20 20 minutes still ahead of them get ready for second half action in the first semifinal coming up This is one of their 
let me know because I can't. I don't know if he's telling you to cut. I, I can't like hear this. Him. Okay, like, it means cut. If I do this, it means okay. keep going. Okay. But I can't hear if Andrea's saying. Yeah. Is he telling you to cut or whatever? No, I saw what was happening. I, okay. I forgot they had a minute thirty video and there's three minutes left. I thought we could talk. Okay. But normally they tell me we're coming out of the interview with the jingle. They didn't tell me and I recognized it. No, I just if you can give me the heads up because I can't hear Andrea. Yeah. So if just I like do you like said, this, cut. If I do like yeah. this, keep talking. Okay. Although I think I did this. Yeah. I meant to do this. I thought you wanted me more time, so I'm Second half action in the first semifinal at the Turkish Airlines Euroleague Final Four about to get underway. The first half was a tale of two quarters as Panathinaikos ruled after 10 minutes ahead 14, 15 to 29. Seska Moscow won the second quarter 17 to 5. So like two championship boxers throwing knockout punches at each other. One first and the other second in the first half. Should make for a great second half, Johnny Rogers. Yes, we've got 20 minutes left to play here. Both teams are coming in. They've got to feel good about their chances. Panathinaikos played an awesome 10 minutes that first game. We've seen beautiful execution. Chester got turned around in the second quarter with a great defense. Is it better to have a big lead and, have, and, and, and lose it or come back from being down? I'm sure the coaches spun it the right way so their, their players have confidence coming into the second half. The Amantitas out top for Panathinaikos, drives on Kirstic, falls back for the shot, misses. Kirstic rips it. That didn't even reach the rim, John. Uh, he, the Amantitas wanted the foul there. He, there was some contact, but it looked like it was good defense by Kirstic. Pick and roll. Teodosis to Kirstic starting the second half, tying it just like Panathinaikos started the game. Exactly. That's what Panathinaikos did to Jessica in the beginning. Yasukevich is back out among the starters for second half. He makes it all the way to the hoop to keep Panathinaikos ahead on the scoreboard. Frank, look how well Yasukevich is moving today. We see him chasing down loose balls, long rebounds, getting to the basket. Just an excellent game by the veteran player. Back inside to Kirstic. He takes it out when he got double teamed. Gets it to Siskowskis. He drives baseline to Teodosic. Inside to Kirstic. Ball's loose. Stolen by Diamantidis. Panathinaikos comes the other way and Siskowskis stops the break before it can develop. Smart play by Siskowskis there, but let's give some credit to Diamantidis all over the court on that last defensive position. Stopping his man, then going in to help to knock that ball loose and come up with a loose ball. Ball to Pantanaikos. There's Yasikiewicz. He one-hands it to Maddox. He's blocked at the rim by Kirilenko. Ball stays with Pantanaikos. It's Yasikiewicz from deep, knocking down a three-pointer. There he is in the corner. Yaskovic is knocking down the shot. You can't give him any space. We know he's a great shooter and a great player under pressure. Unbelievable. He's undefeated at Final Fours in his career and has won four of them, 8-0. and oh. No other player has done that. There's Kirstic answering back inside with two. He's doing the job again. That was a tough basket, but give him credit. He, made, he got some great position to be able to get that close to the basket, but that was not an easy shot at all. Panathinaikos leading 36-39. Yasukevich is in charge in the lane. He misses. And the rebound by Kirilenko ahead to Teodosic. Gets it to Kirilenko, fakes the three. Goes to Shishkowskis. He misses long, but the rebound goes to Kriapa. Pass inside to Shishkowskis for two. There we see an example of Kriapa. Very good passing. Big man spotted his open teammate underneath the basket, Shishkowskis. And they're only down by one point. It's a one-point ball game early in the third quarter. 
Seska and Panathinaikos, Diamantidis out top, tries to go inside. Tomatic, he's fouled from behind by Nenad Kirstich. That'll give us a chance to look at the foul situation. Kirstich had two early, so that gives him three. Kirilenko and Teodosic, their other two superstars, also had two in the first half, but they made the halftime with just those two. That's an important play, Frank. Uh, Kirstich is playing, doing a great job on both ends of the floor. Now with 3,000, he's forced to sit down. Kirstich off the floor. Sasha Khan trying to stop Diamantidis on the floor. Diamantidis gets it to Kalathis. Six on the shot clock. He's all the way out top, driving on Sasha Khan. He goes all the way in and out into the hands of Victor Kriapa. Tried to finish with his left hand. Good option there. Just ball rolled in and out. Teodosic out top, trying to get, give his chance, get his team into the lead with one shot. Kriapa to Khan. Foul on Diamantidis. And on the cut by Kirilenko, Diamantidis commits what will be his second foul. We're going to check on that because I thought he had two early in the game. But it looks like Diamantidis will only be his second foul. Ian Buyukas has three for Panathinaikos. Romain Sato, two, and Mike Batiste, two. Inbound by Seska to get it to Kirilenko. Still with a chance to tie or go ahead on this possession, which they haven't done in the entire game, but it's stolen by Kaimakoglu. Ahead to Sato and Kalates with the ball to Diamantidis, guarded by Kriapa. In the corner to Kalates, he breaks baseline, tries to hand off. This steals by Kriapa, coming the other way. Teodosic out top to Kirilenko. He's going to try a three pointer, and that does put Seska Moscow in the lead for the first time in the whole ball game. Yeah, they've come back all the way. Panthenaikos is really having trouble when they get close to the basket to score there. They're giving, they're going to have to be able to make some open shots to open up some spaces. Unbelievable. Seska come back from 14 down. Now they're ahead by two. Kaima Koglu answers from the corner. It's Panathinaikos back in front. Tough shot by Kaima Koglu there. He had a hand in his face. Kriapa ran at him, but he had great composure and knocked down the three-pointer. The crowd is in there, and it's going back and forth. We're in Sinan Erna Marina in Istanbul for the final four. The first semifinal, Shishkowskis to the rim, to the basket, trying to finish. Blocked again, this time by Kaun. The blocks are piling up for Seska and against Panathinaikos. Sorry, the block was for Panathinaikos, of course. They came the other way, but they lost the ball inside. Ryukis committing the turnover and goes back to Seska Moscow. Buyokas hasn't gone on the board yet. We talked about earlier how he's... Whoa! Kriapa to Kirilenko for the slam! What defense? What can you do against that play? You've got the big guy outside throwing the ball off the rim. Kirilenko was so up, up so high to get that ball and throw it down. The quickness of the pass just baffled the Panathinaikos defense. Diamantidis trying to strike back from deep. Teodosic takes the rebound of the three-pointer. Seska up by one. Kriapa out top. Goes to Siskaskis on the baseline. He gets crash landed on by Vujukas. That's the fourth down, Vujukas. And it'll put Siskaskis on the free throw line to shoot two. So this is not the ball game we saw in the first quarter. We saw exceptional execution by Panathinaikos in the first quarter. But Seska has met the moment in the last two quarters and it's anybody's ball game right now it's all starting with their defense frank it's hit three pointers loaded up with 29 points in the first quarter but that's a distant memory now says could solve that pick and roll it seems like and pantanaco is getting very little out of their most famous play right now yeah they went to their bread and, bread and butter early typically we see pantanaco's teams really use the pick and roll towards the end of the game this this time they came out right out of the gate going through the bread and butter plays Ramuna Shishkaskis on the foul line, former MVP, man, all EuroLeague four times in his career. He knows what this stage is all about, but he misses the first free throw with a chance for to put Seska up a little more. Best he can do is get him two up, and he makes the second one, so it's now a 44-42 ball game. Still plenty of time, almost five minutes left in the third quarter, so there's a whole lot of basketball left and a whole lot of guys who could affect this game. We see Alexei Shved back on the floor for Seska. 
guarding Kalath as it goes cross court to Diamantidis, fakes, goes back out to Kaimakoglu, drive and Kaimakoglu, bodies flying, and that foul is called on Victor Kriya by getting there a little late. Good courage by Kaimakoglu going hard at the basket with all the blocks we've seen from yes. Seska. If you're going to go to the basket, you've got to go hard. Exactly what he did on this play. you got to like his attitude and his aggression that we've seen early in the game on defense, the defensive rebounds, and right there. He made it earlier. He made the three-point shot in the corner, a big shot. Now he gets the ball back. He just took it right to the basket, and he was not going to be stopped by anybody. Very important, him just getting to the free throw line as well, John, because up to this point in the game, Tays goes 15 for 20 from the free throw line. Pantanaco's just three for three, and Kaimakoglu makes it four for four. A perfect free throw shooting, but not getting to the free throw line enough. That's that's indicative of Pantanaco's is not being able to get enough bat, enough shots close to the basket, and not able to. They got to use some pump fakes, get the players, get the Chesica players off their feet, and try and draw some fouls. Kaimakoglu makes two, and I'll tell you that Pantanaco's normally gets as many free throws in the course of a season as any team. Look at Kriapa to Teodosic. He's getting to be the playmaker now, Victor Kriapa. For We've seen three assists from Kriapa in the last two or three minutes. He's doing an excellent job of running the, the uh, Jessica offense. Still a 46-44 lead for Ceska. Kalathis drives, dishes off to Diamantidis, working on Kirilenko. Look at that defense by Kirilenko. Now the switch. Diamantis goes to the corner to Galatez. He pumps up a three off the mark, but he chases down his rebound. That's Diamantis from deep, and that one goes in. Pilot tonight goes out in front again. That's an incredible game, Frank. We see great basketball from both sides. Neither team has given in. These are two heavyweight champs. We expected a great game, almost final-level game, and we're seeing it already. Here's Kitalenko trying to answer back off the backboard and misses. But Kaimakoglu touched the ball last, or Shred touched the ball last. Looks like it'll be Panathinaiko's possession as Kaimakoglu comes up with another big rebound. He's been huge for this team, just like Shred was very important for Chisaka for them to get back into this game. Kinelenko is the top rebounder so far for Seska, but Kaimakoglu is the top rebounder in the game with six, and that he didn't even get credit for the last one. Kalathis. Moves it around to Diamantidis. Inside to Kaimakoglu. He finishes and it's fouled. Kostas Kaimakoglu coming off the bench to pick up Panathinaikos. Incredible play by Kostas Kaimakoglu. No fear. Takes the ball right to the heart of the defense and scores on this play. Let's give some credit to Diamantidis also. Making some incredible passes. Hanging in the air. Faking one way, passing the other. But Kaimakoglu is one of those under the radar guys. He came on to Panathinaikos. Won his first title last year. This year got a whole lot more time during the season and now Joko Bradovic showing confidence and getting rewarded with what he's doing here in the second half. On both ends of the floor Frank, especially on the defensive rebounds, doing an excellent job also. 46-50 to 50, Andre Voronsevich into the game for Sesaka. Ted Osic has the ball guarded by Batiste in the corner to Voronsevich. He's going to launch misses Palathis comes up with the rebound as Pantanaikos in transition going right inside to Mike Batiste. He's guarded by, by Teodosic and gets it back out to Diamantidis. Double team on Batiste. He's trying to go around it, through it, but he gives it up. That's Voron Savic with a big steal. That's very uncharacteristic there of Mike Batiste. Usually you see him kick that ball outside. He had three guys around him. Smart play by Voron Savage on the lob pass. Seeing the mismatch, get right over there. Well, and the defense just warned Mike Batiste on there. He's got, he had his head down and was a little bit out of control there. Wasn't able to see that he had some open teammates out open on the perimeter. Simon Koglu gets called for that foul. That is his second. He's not in foul danger so much, but he went off the floor earlier with a cut in the middle of his forehead, but he's got a Band-Aid on that and he's showing nothing's going to stop him. Seska gets the ball back on his foul. And it's Shved out top. Driving, kicking to Voron Sevich. Off the mark with his three-pointer. Kinelenko gets it back, puts it down, and keeps Siska rolling forward. Look how quick his hands and reactions are underneath this play. He's boxed out by Sato. 
but it doesn't matter. He comes up quickly with that ball, has a presence of mind to go up with the shot. He's fouled, makes the basket. So Kaima Koglu gave a big punch for Panathinaikos after Siska had taken the lead. Got them four ahead, 46 to 50. But a guy like Kirilenko can make that, eat that up, that lead in a, in a matter of seconds. He's going to try for the three-point play. Misses another free throw, however, but he's got Siska within two. He's been struggling with his free throws tonight. Every point is so important. You cannot give away free throws. You have to make every one you can. Galathez. Trying to work with Batiste, gets inside, kicks to Kaimakoglu. He drives again and gets fouled again. Kaimakoglu does. But there won't be any shots on that. He was fouled on the floor. But you have to think, John, that Coach Joko Bradovic put him in there to go to the hoop and start collecting some fouls. Yeah, he's he has a mission, it looks like, Frank. His mission is to take the ball to the basket, go to the heart of the defense. Fearless player. We see him. He's very composed also. He's had some outside shots. He's, we've seen him knock down a, a three-pointer. But what he's done very well also, he's faked that three-point shot with the defense flying at him, and that's opened up some space for him to go in for an easier look. My mistake, uh, Sesko is in the bonus. Of course, it's Kaima Koglu who will shoot two free throws. We've seen him on the free throw line a lot in the last few minutes. Man on a mission, Kostas Kaima Koglu knocks down the first one. He is Up so determined, Frank. He is so determined and focused in this game. That's what champions are all about. He won it last year. This guy hasn't been in the EuroLeague so long, but he's playing like a true tested veteran. He has impressed a lot of people. Has a great three-point stroke as well. But tonight, Kostas Kamakoglu is bringing Panathinaikos back in the in the th third quarter here with four free throws and another basket. It's under two minutes. They hold a four-point lead, 48 to 52. Seska ball with Alexis Shved. He's going to launch a three-pointer and hit a three-pointer. Alexis Shved challenging Batiste and knocking it down. Shved has been huge in this game. He really led that comeback for Jessica on the offensive end, and we see him right now make a huge three-pointer. Alexis Shved on one end. Dimitris Diamantidis on the other end. Driving, getting fouled, putting it down. The big players are coming to try to solve this semifinal. That was an incredible play. I hope we can see this replay. Look how he changes direction and he gets to the other side of the rim. So much space. He's got the so strong arm, arms, such strong legs. Gets to the basket and he can finish easily even though he's fouled. Fouled by Sasha Kahn and Demetrius Diamantidis is up to nine points going for 10. He's got five assists and we don't need to tell anybody that this guy is a big game player and a fourth quarter player like nobody has come along in a long time. We saw it in the playoffs when he practically dragged Panathinaikos into the final four with his best performance in his career in game five of the playoffs. So the next 15 minutes, next 10 minutes could be Diamantidis time, but here's Sped. He's going all the way to the hoop, in and out. Kirilenko with the rebound, in and out. And Voran Savage collects it. We it's saw Shred just take the ball. That was actually his own press by Panathinaikos. He didn't, he didn't care. He just took the ball down the basket. Kidilenko losing the handle. Let's see who comes up with the ball on the baseline. It's going to go to Seska Moscow. Possession, very important here now with less than a minute left in the third quarter. So 12, 12 minutes on the shot clock for, for Jessica. 12 seconds to shoot for Seska with that ball that went out of bounds. Referees want Diamantidis to get further away from Shved on the inbounds. He gets it into Jamont Gordon. Gordon swings it all the way back to Shved. He's going to launch from downtown again. That one misses. Voron Sevich with the rebound. Keeps it inside, trying to finish. But Kaima Koglu all over that. The ball went out of bounds. And it's going to stay. Seska ball, but Kostas Kaima Koglu doing it for he looks like he's all by himself underneath the basket there, Frank. But he's coming up with the balls. Those guys are much taller than he is, but he's coming up with a loose ball because he knows how to use his body. Gordon inbounds, gets it back from Shved. He's in the lane. Goes to Voron Savage, fakes and drives. Voron Savage tries to pass, knocked out to Kirilenko. A survival possession here for Seska with Lavrinovich missing from the corner. And that rebound... Belongs to Diamantidis. 
Trying to get the ball across half court and does just in the nick of time to Nick Kalathis. They are fighting, battling for every inch on this court, Frank. This is an incredible battle. Eight on the shot clock as Diamantinas drives. Behind the back to Kaima Kozul, gets it back to, he's got to shoot the three-pointer, Diamantidis misses, and Kirilenko sweeping the rebound, trying to get it all the way to the other end, but the quarter ends with an amazing, amazing set of plays, couldn't make the shot to finish the quarter, but we have a 51-55 ball game going into the fourth quarter in the first semifinal of tonight's Turkish Airlines Jury League. Final four, we'll take one last break between quarters and show you our inside the game feature on Nick Kalathis of Panathinaikos Athens. In just three seasons, Panathinaikos combo guard Nick Kalathis has developed from a promising talent into an... Back to Gordon, he's going to launch a three. Jamat Gordon off the back of the rim. And pulled by Stratos Perperoglu. Yes, uh, Panathinaikos is trying to mix it up on defense and give Jessica some different looks. But they're basically packing the ball in, making, forcing Jessica to shoot from outside. Panathinaikos working with a four-point lead. Perperoglu inside. Passes pass. to Tatsadis. He's blocked at the rim by Kriapa, but that wasn't a clean block. So he's going to the free throw line. Close to Tatsadis, the veteran, with three EuroLeague trophies to his name in there for the fourth quarter to try to give that character to Panathinaikos to finish this one. He gets knocked down hard it looks by like, Kriapa. Frank, it looks like he hit his head on that play. And they're going to have to sub because of the trainers and the doctors are coming out to look at him. So a sub will come into the game and we'll get those free throws. There you saw on the replay how he got knocked in the head on the block attempt by Victor Kriapa. But it was a great pass by Perperoglu from post to post to get both the side side is free. A veteran like that doesn't get many dunk opportunities in a game like this, but he went for it. Costa Stoko, Costa well, we, side we see him stumble right now. He tried to get up and he stumbled and he's back down on his knees and has to be helped off the floor. So a knock on the head. Sorry to see that for Costa side side the veteran. Walking gingerly off the floor. He got, it's the kind of plays that at the rim in a big game like this with a block shot blocker like Kriapa going for it can happen. I don't think anything was intentional. He was going for the block. He's going for the block, and Sassadis did the right thing. He went for the dunk because if he would have tried to lay that ball up, the shot would have been blocked. You see his head spinning a little bit still. Let's hope he's okay. And they put Mike Batiste in the game to shoot the free throws, John. 79% free throw shooter this year. I thought they might just bring in Yasikevich just to shoot the free throws, but Mike Batiste knocks down the first one. Yeah, he's made his first three shots earlier from the free throw line. So far, he's four for four tonight. And with the second free throw, which also falls, he's got his team, Mike Batiste does, up six points. That's as much as they've been up since Seska came back in the late second quarter. Yeah, Panathinaikos is slowly increasing their lead. And it looks like they're trying to slow down Jessica, throwing that little little full court pressure on the ball. Inside the Kirilenko, Seska trying to answer back. And he hits a turnaround jumper. His team needed that one, John. Oh, they need him badly. They have to get the ball inside. Nobody really can match up with Kirilenko. They've got to get the ball inside to uh, Kirilenko in the low post. Panathinaikos, Kalathis on the wing. Gets a screen from Batiste, chased by Kirstich. He was looking inside to Batiste. Batiste gets called for the offense, a foul on the defense by Teodosic. And not even with the pass, the pass, the ball was already moving. The pass was not going to go in there, but the ref saw Batiste maybe using his arm a little too much on Teodosic, or else Teodosic just made a very good play. Teodosic was smart enough. He didn't get caught up in a wrestling match. Let Batiste go into him. Ref spotted that and they called the foul, even though it was away from the ball. So he's got four down, has a chance to cut it some more, and Teodosic out top, working with Kirstich. There was a pass attempt inside. Sato fell down, but Kirilenko fell down too, and the ball sailed out of bounds. So give that. I was watching Sato on that play, did an excellent job trying to get around Kirilenko. Was on the side, was three quarters, finally got in front of him. Kirilenko was not able to get the ball because Sato did an excellent job on defense right there. 
Excellent job, but he came off the floor for Kaima Koglu. Coming back in for Panathinaikos, and they have a four point lead with now a little more than eight minutes to go. Kalathis out top, looking for somebody to pass to. Ball ends up with Jasikiewicz, just gets it to Batiste. He spins inside, misses the hook, and Kirsten rips the rebound. You can see him a little bit hesitant with all those shot blockers inside. Yeah, those it's going to try from DV, knocks it down, a three pointer, makes it a one point game. Milos Teodosic of Siska has his team within 56-57. Kalathis for Panathinaikos. Gets it inside to Batiste. He goes way up. There's another block for Siska. They're doing it at the rim, Johnny Rogers. And they're changing shots. They're blocking shots. They've got the Panathinaikos players very hesitant underneath the basket. Kirstich inside alone. He puts it down. Siska has the lead. 58-57, 58-57, and it's going back and forth like the champions these two teams are. Oh, we're seeing two of the best teams, if not the two best teams in EuroLeague right now, going at it. Obradovich, I like the, the gesture he just made to his players to settle down. Everything's okay. You know, just to can you continue fighting to get back into this game. Galatas wide open. He misses that one, however. And Kliapa rips the rebound. What changes the momentum we've seen throughout this game? Yeah, those that's on the floor still has the ball, makes the pass to Kirilenko, blocked by Purple Roglo. Unbelievable. Yes, Kavichis gets it to Purple Roglo, gets it all the way back on the opposite baseline and knocks it down. Now it's Panathinaikos in the lead. Look at the composure by the Panathinaikos players. Nobody rushed their shot. They, they were very unselfish, moved the ball around. We saw six or seven passes on that short possession. What a block by Purple Roglo at the right moment giving his team a chance to take back the lead. Now it's Kirilenko trying to do that for Sesika, but the ball goes over the backboard. Panathinaikos possession, 6.26 to play. We saw, Anybody's guess what could happen in this one. We saw, I could see Kirilenko on that play was really in a hurry. As soon as he got the ball, he was shooting. You could see he wants this game so bad. He was lost a little bit of patience right there and just rushed his shot and wasn't able to make it. But you, see, you could see he's so determined to win this game. Yamantidis out top for Panathinaikos. He gets it back. He's got a mismatch with Kirstich. Looks like he wants to use it. Instead passes to Batiste. Shot clock down to three. Somebody's got to shoot it. It's going to be Batiste. He got it off and missed. And the shot is rebounded by Siskas because he gets fouled. Looks like by Batiste. So nobody has been able to take the upper hand. Of course, since the incredible first half we had on one team, Panathinaikos blew out Seska in one quarter, and Seska blew out Panathinaikos in the next quarter to set up this thriller. It's an incredible game. Unfortunately for Panathinaikos, that was the fourth foul on Mike Batiste. He has to go to the bench. Alex Modish comes back in the game, and Obradovich, I'm sure he's going to hold that we can see some minutes like he did in the first half. Under six minutes to play. Shved with the ball for Sesika. They're down one, but they've got some momentum right now. Teodosic working with Kirstic. Gets it to Siskauskas. He drives baseline. Gets fouled by his countryman from Lithuania, Sharunas Jasikevicius. So Seska will... But we're going to have a timeout before we see free throws from... Each other, and you like to see that. Nobody's getting bailed out by uh, by ticky tack fouls. Before we come back from the timeout, let me remind fans that these two teams, with six EuroLeague titles each, dating all the way back to the late 1950s, are second on the list behind only Real Madrid with eight. They are trying to get that seventh one, but only one of them can get to Sunday to the final to try to get their hands on the trophy. While Panathinaikos. Only one team in the last 20 years has won two in a row, and they're trying to become the second one, but they got to win this game tonight. Seska trying to take a lead. They're down 58-59. Five and a half minutes left. Kliapa on the wing. Goes inside to Siskowskis. He's going to shoot falling down, and he misses. Good defense by Jacek Avicius. Used his body perfectly on that to, to protect the basket. Perperoglu with the rebound. He has the ball out top now. Stratos Perperoglu. Gets the ball to Alex Maric now in the game. Four pads and I goes. Yamantides looking for somebody to pass to only six on the shot clock. Down to four. He's going to have to launch it. And he does, but he gets open to do it. Misses the shot, however, Diamantides. Here comes Teodosic the other way. 
all the way inside, but decides to pull it out. His team, with a chance to take the lead, has been back and forth several times since the middle of the third quarter. Here's Alexei Shved trying to pass off to Kirstich, and look at Serena Jaskiewicz just catch up and knock that out of bounds. He's moving so well on the court, Frank. This is as good as I've seen Sadis in several seasons. He looks very good on the court, very, very quick, very fast. We Same. see on that play, I'm surprised that Jessica goes to a pick and roll with Shved. He can get around his man easily. It might be better served to give him a little bit more space. With the pick and roll, he has two defenders on him. Especially if he's matched up with Jaskiewicz. Yes. Youthful speed against the other guy. But like you said, Jaskiewicz is moving better than ever. Jaskiewicz guarding Sushkowskis right now. It's going to be Teodosic from the corner off the rim with a tough shot. Didn't go down, and Pandanaiko is still clinging to the lead with 4.30 to play. That's Kevin just on top. Don't give him any space. He's going to knock that shot down. And he tries it, and it goes out for Yasekiewicz. Rebound corralled by Kriapa. Takes it out safely. Shred across half court. Another try to go ahead for Seska. It's Teodosic on the wing. 12 on the shot clock. He's working on Perperoglu. Goes inside to Kriapa. Kriapa spins on Sato. It's going to take a fall away. Look at Sitskowskis trying to tip it in, but oh. misses. And the ball pulled down Incredible. by Alex Maric. Incredible defense by Romain Sato. They're sacrificing his body for the team. And we just see these guys just giving everything they've got on the court, Frank. Another missed opportunity by Seska Diamantidis on the top for Pantanaikos. But an offensive foul has been called. It looks like it's on Alex Maric. He ended up on the floor. We've got two minutes with no points scored as these teams are tightening the screws on the defensive end. And as we said, it's getting very physical. Maric gets called with F fouls. That's a turnover for Panathinaikos, but very low turnovers in this game, Johnny Rogers. They've Just also- 11 for Panathinaikos and only eight for Cesc not so far. Shred with the ball, breaks loose. Edward versus, it's knocked out by Maric. That's a basket for Alexi Shved, and what a move. He is so quick. Guy. If he gets any daylight at all, he's getting to the basket so good. Look at him get to the basket there. And hang, and glide, and lay the ball in with his offhand. And that ball was going in when Alex Marich knocked it off the rim. And that puts Siska Moscow ahead 60-59 to 59 with 3.30 to play. I can't say the psychological barriers are being crossed now because they've been going back and forth. Yeah. The whole game, but Sisk has got the lead. They got three and a half minutes to go. Mike, incredible. Mike Batiste is back in the game, Frank. An incredible semifinal. We see the All Euro League star Mike Batiste back in the game. But Teodosic fouls Sharunas Jasikiewicz. They've done a very good job. Chesica has done a very good job of saving their team fouls. They've only got two team fouls. Panthonikos has four. So next time Panthonikos makes a foul there's going to be two free throws and we see how tough it is to score a point so if you can get some free throw that's going to be a huge advantage but the night goes inbounds the ball yes just gets in the lane kicks to Yamantides, but he took an extra step as he moved through the lane and that's a turnover on Panathinaikos. as we said they're now up to 12 as compared to eight four it's got to take the ball a little better. Kiapa has it, tries to go inside to Kirstich. And just as I said, they took care of the ball. The pass got away from Kirstich. That's a good idea. Kirstich had a good position and sealed his man. But again, we see Yasekovicius come from the weak side and interrupt that that pass in there and really bother Kirstich on the play. That gives Panathinaikos another chance to retake the lead. Let's change hands almost constantly they, since the end of the third quarter. They can't turn the ball over. There's three minutes left in this game. they got to get a good shot. Yamatidis again with Kirstich in a mismatch. Steps back, gives up the shot, gets it back from Batiste. Still has Kirstich on. This time he'll take the shot, and it's off the mark. The ball apparently touched by Kiri Lenko and another great look, hustle look, play by Kaima Koglu to right. give his team the ball back. That guy has played an outstanding game, an unheralded player for the most part, but he has given it his all, and he has been so key for Panathinaikos tonight. Coast is coming over the road. Diamantides inbounds, trying to get it in, gets it to Yasikiewicz. 
He takes a run and jumper from the top of the lane, and his penalty night goes back in front. Incredible play by Sadis. Has the composure to, 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 to make that shot go in the lane. Threw up an awkward shot, but it went in. He's got such a good touch. Teodosic with the ball. Panayas back. Tries to kick it out. There's Yatsikovic with the steal. There you have it. Veterans performing under pressure. Sadis, who has not lost one Final Four game, eight in his career. Making Sato, a big place. Sato from the corner driving. All cross court to Yasekevichis from downtown. There it is. It's another one. Sarunas Yasekevichis. He forces a timeout by Morning Bank tonight. Goes up 60 to 64. Incredible play by Sadis. We see him doing it on both ends of the floor. Makes the tough running shot earlier. Next possession. Hits the three pointer. But. Let's not Teodosic with 10. They are going to have to make up some points in the last two minutes and 12 seconds to get back in this ballgame. Obradovich takes Yaskovicius out of the game to give him some, give him a blow, and he puts Kalatis in the game. We know Kalatis is a very tough defender right now. He's got a tough job against Alexei Shved. Alexei Shved with the ball. He's been a huge spark for Sesaka. And there's a tempted steal by Kalathis, but a heads-up play by Sved, knocking it off the knee of Diamantidis. He's very, Diamantidis is very frustrated with himself. He didn't come up with that ball. Now it's Teodosic on top of Sezaka. Double team gets the ball to Sved. He fakes the shot. He's going to take a fadeaway. Alexa Sved, it goes up and down, and he's got the magic tonight. He gets his team within two, 62-64. That was great defense by Kaimer Kogolo. But Sped just makes an incredible shot there. Big basket, brings his team back to within two points. Minute and a half to play. Galathis for Panathinaikos, plays the pick and roll, gets it to Kaimakoglu, he's driving to the rim, goes to Batiste. People, another block by Kinileko, it's Sved on the run. He's gonna slam, but he was fouled before that. But the kid has a lot of energy. Oh, he's just, he's like a wild horse, wants to be free and running the court. You give him any space or any space, and you see what he's capable of doing, what he, how he finished after they blew the whistle already. There you see the block from behind and in front coming from Kitty Lenko. There you see the block. Shred outraces everybody, but he got fouled on the way, so he will get he to gets the two free shots throw line thing, yeah. and attempt to tie this ball game. It's been a thriller all night of a different kind. Pantanai goes up 14 after one quarter. Jessica tied it by halftime. Now it's been back and forth. And Alexi Sved misses the first of his two free throws, so he will not tie it. Let's see if he can get Seska within one with a minute 26 to play. Turns out to be a great foul by Pantanai goes just to get one point. They stop the break, and we've got Yaskovicius is back in the game. And it looks like Obradovic is going to be making the substitutions depending on if they have the ball or if they're on defense. Alexis Schmidt makes the second one. It is now 63 6 got 64. Panathinaikos, a whole lot of time left for two great coaches, 126 to play to try to put their strategy in. We have a timeout already. But Johnny Rogers, you talked about putting in just an incredible performance. But you're right, Sped has really showed what he's worth tonight. He came in the beginning of the game when his team was down, fearless, went to the basket. Nobody could stop him, really. I think they got to give him some clear out situations because he's so tough to guard one on one. Very, very quick into the basket, but also, as you mentioned before, he's shooting 50% from three point range, so you have to respect his outside shot. We have one minute, 26 seconds on the clock at Sinan Erdem Arena in Istanbul, Turkey. An incredible sellout crowd of 15,000 and two incredible teams going at it, hammer and tongue, until the end of this first semifinal at the Turkish Airlines EuroLeague Final Four. It's Seska 63, Panathinaiko 64, coming out of a timeout to see which of these great teams can take control in just, now it's a 90 second game, John. 90 second game, Panathinaikos has the ball out, they have the first chance to score here. Be interesting to see what happens, they've gotten some good looks with Batista underneath the basket, he hasn't been able to finish because Jessica is just flying up there, challenging the shot, blocking and challenging the shots. Yeah, Batista's out top, gets it to Yaskevich, is inside to Batista, he's guarded by young Andre Voroncevich. 
He puts his hand in and commits a foul. You said, John, that this guy's fouls to give. How do you think they want to use those? We saw one example. Well, they still have one more foul to give. I don't know if that was necessary to use the foul right there, but certainly they can stop any play, any any play that's going to lead to an easy basket by Panathinaikos without having to give up two free throws. We're on Savage on Giamatidis. Now Jesse Davis just out top guarded by Shuskaskis. Giamatidis gets the ball back, goes into the lane, gets it to Kaimakovu, pulls it out three on the shot clock. And at the late point in the shot clock, Kriapa gets called on another aggressive drive by Kostas Kaimakovu. And unfortunately for Panathinaikos, they don't have shots. They're not going to get free throws. The ref said he was fouled before the active shooting and because Jessica used their fouls wisely. They're not in the bonus. So now Panathinaikos will take the ball out again. They're using up the clock. They're still ahead by one. It's under a minute now. Yasakevich just with the ball. He goes right inside the Batiste. Turns for a hook shot in and out. Spread with the rebound. Comes the other way. 48 seconds left. Tiska down one. Spread against Diamantinas. Makes his move. Ball is loose. Out of bounds. Touched by Panathinaikos. And the referee... Had Siska taking the ball out of bounds for another shot and taking the lead. Panathinaikos, you can see they're upset there. They thought it was off of Sved, but that's what we're talking about, the clear out right there, Frank. Sved is so quick, he can get to the basket. He doesn't need a pick and roll to get free. And right there, Diamantinas did as best he could to keep him in front, and he wasn't, didn't have a totally clear path to the basket. We saw two Panathinaikos defenders, defenders harassing him. Siska gets the ball back, goes right inside. Kriya, but back to Teodosic. And Siska in front on the shot by Teodosic. It's 38 seconds left. 65-64. Timeout on the floor. Any of these stars could solve it. Everybody has faith in all their teammates. What a play. Teodosic to Kriya, but close from the inbounds play and right back to Teodosic for the shot. We've seen him hit big shots before. He didn't hesitate. He got this ball out of bounds here. Still plenty of time on the shot clock. He just went up. He didn't hesitate. Great play drawn up by head coach Jonas Kozlowskis of Seska. He knew the inbound defender was going to double team the short pass. Got it right back to Teodosic. You had to. was very well executed right there. Got the ball inside the paint. Kalatis had to come over to help. But as soon as Teodosic had any daylight, he was going up for the shot. It's interesting now, Frank. We have 38 seconds left in the game. Panathinaikos could try to make two possessions by taking an early shot in this offense. It's going to be interesting to see what they do now. They can go for a two plus one situation. Try to get the shot as early as they can in the offense so that they'll have the ball at the end. The quick shot certainly worked for Ceska Moscow. It put them in front, 65-64. Milos Teodosic making that one. And it's going to be up to the champions to respond with 38 seconds left. What do you see Jumbo Bradovich ordering for Panathinaikos now? I I think we all know who's going to get the ball. I think the ball is going to be in the hands of Diamantidis. And I don't, I'm don't. i not sure they're going to go into Mike Batiste this time. I think you're going to see the two guards dominate the ball, and they're going to make the plays. It's going to be either Sadis or Diamantidis. It's Diamantidis getting into Yasukevich. He's guarded by Sushkasa. It's a switch for and seven. Diamantidis just Yasukevich all the way in. Misses a roller, and the ball taken by Kliapa. This guy's got trouble getting the ball across the half court. Let's see if they do. Shred does it. Shred got it across. Only somebody with his speed can do something like that. He got it across half court. He gets fouled by Yasukevich. So he'll be going to the free throw line and attempts to add to the difference for this guy. They're up one. He went to the line before and only hit one out of two a minute ago. If he gets two out of two this time, he puts Seska Moscow in a very good position. Panther Eichels was upset. They tried to get that eight-second violation. Teams have eight seconds to get the ball across half court. They're upset they couldn't do it. They made a quick foul, and they're going to have 20 seconds left to attack if they can get the rebound on this. On this Alexei Shved makes a two-point lead. Here's his next free throw off the mark. The rebound was touched by Mike Batiste as he was harassed by Voron Sevich. Goes out of bounds and stays Seska ball, you're surprised to see Mike Batiste slide. It looked like he thought a teammate was there to get his, to slap the rebound to him. That's really the worst thing that could have happened for Panathinaikos right now because they need the ball, but instead the ball's going to go to Jessica with a two-point lead. They're going to be forced to foul because Jessica could just run out the clock. There's only 20 seconds left, and of course they have 24 seconds 
Saints to Moscow holding a 66-64 lead with 20 seconds left in tonight's first semifinal against the defending champions of Panathinaikos. And they have the ball with these 20 seconds left. So it's their game to control at this point. They can, they, Panathinaikos will have to foul unless they get a steal on the inbounds. It's that simple, isn't it, John? Yeah, they'll have to foul. Uh, they don't want the clock to run down. Uh, there's just no other chance right now. They're going to have to foul, and they're going to have to try to find who's the worst free throw shooter. But they don't have that much time either. They're almost going to be forced to foul whoever gets the shot as soon as they can. And Sved was also the right man at the right time just to get that ball across half court yeah. before he got fouled by Yaskevich just to go and add a point to his team's lead. Then he misses the second one, and Mike Batiste, I don't think he's trying to one-hand the rebound. I think he had his eye on a teammate to get the ball up court fast, slap it to him, and the teammate took off early. Yeah, I think, and also he wanted to, he wanted to knock the ball off. He didn't want the ball to go in, but I think he also, I think you're right, he spotted a teammate where he's trying to tip the ball. 20 seconds left, Kirilenko in to Teodosic. He still has the ball. Let's see if they try to foul him. They're not, they're hawking him. Gets the ball to Siskowskis. The ball, Siskowskis gets it up. The ball, finally a foul by Siskowskis. Siskowskis with nine seconds left fouled and will go to the free throw line Lamuna Shishkowskis Panthinaikos doesn't like it maybe they were trying to foul we don't know. Sure they were trying to foul they didn't get the fouls they either wanted to foul, they said if it wasn't a foul it was a traveling, you can see them upset there on the bench their competitors of course are going to be upset this ball game in the last 90 seconds has been slipping out of their hands but with 9.1 seconds left we got Teodosic on the free throw line he gets two chances. His team is up by two. The key now is whether or not he makes two free throws. Milos Teodosius, but he's an 88.1% free throw shooter this season. First one by Teodosic. In and out with nine seconds left. That means that Panathinaikos will have a chance at least to tie this ball game. Let's see first if Milos Teodosic can make his second free throw. Everybody holding their breath in Sinan Erdem Marina in Istanbul, Turkey. Milos Teodosic, second free throw, in and out. The ball is loose. It goes to Panathinaikos, knocked out by Andre Voronsevich. So now we got a two point game. Frank, look what's a happened. A timeout on the floor and 8.3 seconds for the greatest coach in European basketball history to get his team a shot to tie or win this game. He's going against one of the best defenses you've ever, you've also seen, ever seen in Europe. Uh, a lot of height, a lot of athleticism. It's not going to be easy, but let's let's look at what just what happened. Jessica has missed three of their last four free throws. Unfortunately for Panathinaikos, they were not able to control that first free throw. Lost a lot of time on the clock. Now, fortunately for them, they got this ball. They weren't able to control the rebound, but they got the ball out of bounds. It's actually better for them because now they're going to take it out closer to their basket. And as you said, we've got the brightest mind that European basketball has ever seen drawing up a play right now. This should be some 8.3 seconds we have left after the misses by Milos Teodosic had a chance to put his team up at least by one, by three to... to to force Panathinaikos to make a three-pointer just to get the overtime, but he missed both and Panathin that gives Panathinaikos a chance not only to tie it but to win it with 8.3 seconds left. Side out of bounds. We see on the floor for Panathinaikos Yasekevich is Sato, Kaimatoglu, Diamantidis, and Batiste and the defense Shishkowskis, Kriapa, this time Boronsevich, Kirilenko, and Alexei Shved. Let's see what happens. 8.3 seconds left. We've got Kirilenko on Di Diamantidis, and they're not going to let Diamantidis get the ball. That's where Panathinaikos wants the ball. Diamantidis double team. Now it's Kriapa on Diamantidis. Shot clock down to three. Ball's loose. It's still loose. Time is seeming to run out. Seska Moscow's defense has got the ball, and they've got the game. The Turkish Airlines EuroLeague will have a new champion for 2011-2012 with a great comeback effort by Seska Moscow to defeat Panathinaikos Athens 68-64 at the final four, just the first semifinal. We have Barcelona and Olympiacos still to go tonight. What a game, what an effort by both of these teams, but the champions have fallen. The EuroLeague will have a new champion 
And Cisco Moscow wants to be that team after they made the effort tonight. Just an incredible effort by Jessica. And let's be honest, a heartbreaking defeat for Panthenikos. They gave their all. They gave a great effort tonight. But they were against a huge team. Just a great, an awesome, an awesome machine, Jessica. Jessica fought and did everything they had to do to win this game. But it wasn't easy. Could have went either way. And it was just a heartbreaking defeat for Panthenikos. Unbelievable effort. There you see the last play replayed again. The ball got slapped away, and Andre Kinileko ended up with it. He was the leader of this team. He had an incredible night. Andre Kinileko, not as, as a top scorer with 17 points, but also just willing his team back from a 14 point deficit after one quarter and all the lead changes right up until the last minute. Andre Kirilenko coming up with the last ball, and he is our player of the game as well. We're going to see Andre Kirilenko as the player of the game for the winner, Seska Moscow. We will be looking soon enough at our player of the game video for first interview. We heard from Andre Kirilenko, our player of the game in the Turkish Airlines Euro League semifinal. His team, Seska Moscow, knocked out the champions, and we will.